Presenting Detective Nick Harris in a salute to the law. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again we bring you Detective Nicholas B. Harris, chief of the internationally known Los Angeles Detective Agency bearing his name in a dramatization of one of his true crime stories, proving to the youth of today the folly of committing crime. gentlemen, often I have repeated that the criminal cannot win in the long run. And this evening, as we continue to unfold the true life account of Pearl Lachey, the young blonde shoplifter, we shall see more clearly than ever the truth of my statement. Now, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Russell, and good evening, everyone. You will remember last week that Pearl Lachey had an overwhelming desire for things that were pretty, an expensive luxury, which as a young girl she had been denied. And so Pearl fell into the habit of picking up from department store counters such articles as high-priced silk holes, costly hats, and many similar items. Last week, we traced her early career from a petty theft of an expensive pair of silk stockings to a more serious offense of shortchanging a large department store. And we finally left her in the act of stealing a $500 wedding gown from one of the city's smartest stores. But as Pearl Lachey left the store, with a frantic saleswoman trying to trace the lost gown, Lula Lane, one of my best women operators, followed. Out in the street, Miss Lane approached Pearl Lachey and her shifty, one-armed escort, Charles Deaver. Pearl, hurry up. I think a woman next spot is in the store. I don't know, but... Oh, I ain't afraid of them. I've had dealings with them before. And besides, Charles... Can I... the chatter and come along with me quick. All right. Wait a minute, Pearl. Oh, what do you want, you? I want that $500 wedding gown you've got stuffed inside your clothing. Come with me. Both of you. If you try to get away, you won't make it. There's a plain clothes room watching us now. Might as well give up, Pearl. They've got us. Okay, Miss Lane. I remember you from before. But someday I'm going to shake you for good. Thus, Pearl Lachey, innocent-looking blonde shoplifter, served her first jail term. During this period, downtown Los Angeles department stores breathed a combined sigh of relief. But during her incarceration, I instructed my operators to become thoroughly familiar with Pearl's features. And upon her release, Hazel Gordon again took up her vision. Now aided by Isabel Carpenter, another shrewd woman operator, one day the pair spotted Pearl sauntering along Broadway, dressed smartly and made up to kill. That pair she wears, that blonde with a Hollywood swagger and the thick coat of war paint? Yes, she looks like she's working in pictures, doesn't she? You know, that extra girl attitude? Here I am, all dialed up, look me over. Well, from that past record of her, she's up to something, you can be sure. Yes, but what? Come on, Hazel, let's follow her. <laughs> that girl for five hours, Hazel, and we haven't seen a single suspicious action. No, she just keeps going, does a little honest shopping, and stops at nearly every drugstore she passes. At nearly every drugstore she passes. Hmm. Say, Hazel, do you suppose, do you think she may be up to something with the drugstores now? Oh, I don't know, but it's a hunch worth following up. Yes, I think it is. Come along. We'll go in the next drugstore behind her. Now, wait a minute. You go in behind her. She doesn't know you yet, and she knows me. Well, we have had dealings before, you know, Isabel. Now go ahead and keep close to her. I'll keep my distance from each other. All right, here goes. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Give me a ten cent bottle of Paragard, please. Paragard, certainly, ma'am. Oh, so that's it. She drinks Paragard. The whole bottle. I'll tell her father on and make sure. 
Yes, lady, what will you have? Paragoric, the ten-cent bottle. All right, a bottle of Paragoric. Clerk, clerk, give me a ten-cent bottle of Paragoric, quick. Please hurry. So, Pearl Lachey is a dope addict. Mr. Jerome, I didn't expect to see you here in this store. Hello, Estelle. What are you doing? Keeping an eye out for shoplifting? Well, Christmas is a good time for them. Besides, I do have a little shopping to do myself. Mr. Yes. Jerome! What? Oh, Hazel and Isabel. Well, well, what are you two up to? Oh, we've been sailing Pearl Lachey again, Mr. Pearl Jerome. Pearl Yes, and Isabel found out why she stops at nearly every drugstore she passes. Well, don't She buys about. a ten-cent bottle of Paragoric, goes to the ladies' room, and drinks the contents of the bottle. Then she's a dope fiend. Yes. I see. Well, why are you two here now? Oh, well, Pearl's in here somewhere. Well, we've lost her. Well, get back on her trail. I'm just shopping, but Estelle and I will keep our eyes open, too. Now, you two had better cover one of the other floors. We'll stick here on the main floor. All right, Mr. Jerome. We'll find her again if it takes all day. Good, reliable pair, those two, Estelle. Yes, and you can see those two are worn out tracking down that blonde shop, Mr. Mr. Martin, Mr. Martin. Yes, Miss Denning, what's the trouble? Those girls, the two over there with the mirrors. I don't know for sure, but I think I saw them take a $20 hat from Miss Pedestal. What? Yes, but I don't know where they put it. Why, it simply vanished. All right, Miss Denning. You come with me. Uh, and... Just a minute, Floor Walker. I'm a Harris detective. What's the matter here? A detective? Yes. And this young woman is Miss Graham, department store operative. My name's Jerome. Well, there's those two girls over there by that mirror near the hat counter. They've hidden an expensive hat somewhere. Mr. Jerome, what shall we do? We haven't any actual proof. Yet Miss Denning saw them. All right. Now, don't you or your clerk do anything. Just leave them to us. Come along, Estelle. We're shopping. You're the wife, and I'm the shop husband. Come on. We'll go closer. Can't see their faces yet, Estelle. I wish they'd turn around. Well, go ahead and pretend to be looking at these hats here. I'll watch them. Okay. Oh, look. Did you see that, Mr. Jerome? Yes. Pretty slick. She slipped her old hat on that rack and put a new one on her head. Come on, Estelle. They're turning. Ready to leave. We'll get them now. Mr. Jerome, that girl stole another one of our hats just then. I saw her, and I'm going to grab her. Just a minute, Mr. Floorwalker. Don't you know there's a law in this state that says an arrest for shoplifting can't be made until the suspect has shown intent to take, steal, and carry away the article in question? Well, isn't that intent enough? No, not until she takes it out of your store. Now, stay here. My operator and I will get her outside. Mr. Jerome, look! That face! Is that the face of that girl yes, that's Yes, it's Paula Shea. Come on, let's get her! All right, Stella, you grab the other girl's arm. I'll take care of her. Okay. What's the big guy? Oh, 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 and you, Paula Shea, come down. along with us. We want you and those two hats you just took from the store. So Pearl Lachey was once again arrested and convicted on charges of theft. And once more she went to prison. Her younger companion, in whose blouse was found the $20 half purse stolen, was sentenced to juvenile hall. And so twice, the young blonde shoplifter beat the law. Twice she had gone up for brief term. Another year passed. And then, with reports of stolen dresses coming into our office from other department stores, I detailed Estelle Graham. She was put back on the job. This time, she put to use a brand new idea, and this is how it worked out. She went into that fitting room, Miss Graham. I see, Mr. Jones. And you say you first saw her wearing a salesgirl's apron with a sales book in place, carrying the frock that way. Yes, and I don't know that girl. I'm a floor walker here, you know. And I know on sight all of our clerks. Well, it's probably that Pearl Lachey again. Follow me. I've got a little gadget fixed up in all the fitting rooms here, Mr. Jones. Perhaps we shall discover something. Miss Bell Graham... And the floor walker tiptoed to a secluded spot behind the fitting room just entered by this new suspect. And standing on a chair, Estelle looked into a small cylinder of an ingenious periscope. She had fitted out for this very purpose. You were right. It's a steel, and it's Pearl Lachey wrapping that frock around her waist. I'll nab her outside. That rent, rent receipt we found on Pearl brought us here. But under the doorbell outside, the name listed was Pearl Farley. The same Pearl Lachey, says the landlady, Mr. Jerome. But, Lieutenant, 
What about all these stolen luxuries here? Gowns, coats, jewelry. I wonder why she didn't sell them to a fence. Huh, she didn't need to, Inspector. The landlady told me that Miss Farley, as Pearl Lachey called herself here, did sell these things. She had a swell trade with all the movie extras from Hollywood. Here, Mr. Jerome, is where they got their fancy wardrobe. So that's it, huh? Sold this stuff to the extras and probably dirt cheap, too. That's right. And thus, Pearl Lachey was put out of circulation for a third time. And after her release, nothing was again heard of her. Until about a year later. Guess this is the place, Lieutenant Parker. Yeah, those Chase brothers who uh, robbed telephone boxes of nickels, dimes, and quarters gave this address for Ed Farley. The guy they said uh, sold them the master key to open telephone. Farley? Farley? Say, that brings something back to my mind. Come on, let's knock. Here's a pass key. Fine, let's have it. Well, nobody here. Let's look around, Parker. Sure. Wonder where this Ed Farley kept us. Wait, wait a minute. What's that? A dame. Pearl of Shade. Oh! You... Lieutenant, ask her. Get her. Little devil, she's trying to get away. Pearl, Pearl, get away from that window. Get away from me! Take your Inspector, hands off she you threw get... something out of the window. Pearl? You might as well tell. We'll search below anyhow. Oh, oh, you know, Mr. Jerome. I don't want to go in stir again for that. For what? Oh. I didn't ask you that. I want to know what oh. you threw out of that window. Oh, well, oh, hi, Pearl. Dope again, eh, Pearl? Well, come along with me. Right now we want to know something about master keys that fit telephone coin boxes. You stay here and search the place, Parker. And this nearly ended the case of Pearl Lachey, who was exonerated on the telephone coin box card. And she gave us information leading to the arrest of the maker of the master telephone box keys. But several months later, the final chapter of the blonde chocolate lifter was at last written in San Francisco. A telegram came through to me from that city, stating simply, Pearl Lachey, former morphine addict, now cocaine fiend, jumped from window of a San Francisco doctor's office, died instantly, a suicide. And that's all. And so, as I say to the youth of today again, this case also proves that crime does not pay. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the concluding chapter of another true life story brought to you by Detective Nicholas B. Harris, internationally famous Los Angeles criminologist and chief of the detective agency bearing his name. Although this was a true story, fictitious names and places have been used throughout this narrative. The story was dramatized by Howard W. Bull and produced under the direction of Carol and Carroll with Wesley Turtelot at the organ. Mr. Harris wishes me to thank the following cast for their participation in this program. Betty Carmine, Olive Thomas, Mary Ryan, Lenore Thompson, Marion O'Moore, Earl Hurt, George Conkling, Lawrence Travers, and Eric Loring. Mr. Harris will again be heard over this station next Friday evening at 8.45 in another interesting true-life story entitled The Fatal Ace of Spades. This is Frank Russell speaking. <laughs>